اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القران الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَاسْتَبَقَلْ بَابَا فَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ مِنْ دُبُرٍ وَالْفَيَا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَ الْبَاب قَالَتْ مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ رَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ سُوَمٌ إِلَّا إِنْ يُسْجَنَا عَذَابٌ نَلِيمٌ صدق الله العظيم قال الله تعالى في القران الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم फलम्मारा having recited some verses from the full passage which i will refer to shortly i will give its translation in a moment this passage relates to another incident related in surah yusuf or chapter joseph of the holy quran while dealing with the earlier part of the life of joseph yusuf alayhisalam he was the great grandson of abraham or as we say in urdu yusuf was the padpota of ibrahim as i said last week joseph was sold as a slave to an egyptian military officer and his family and that officer told his wife to make his stay honorable the quran tells us that later on the officer's wife in other words the woman of the house attempted to seduce joseph but he was righteous and he rejected her advances one day when she and joseph were in a room alone she bolted the door and attempted to attract him but he ran for the door and the holy quran then says what i've just recited from and which i will now translate the holy quran says and they raced with one another to the door joseph and the woman of the house and she tore his shirt from behind and they met her husband at the door she said that is to say to the husband what is the penalty for one who intends evil to your wife except imprisonment or a painful punishment joseph said she sought to seduce me and a witness of her own family bore witness saying if his shirt is torn in front she speaks the truth and he is a liar and if his shirt is torn torn from behind then she is telling a lie and he is the truthful so when the husband saw joseph's shirt torn from behind he said surely this is an intrigue of you women your intrigue is indeed great or very serious and then addressing joseph the husband said turn aside from this and addressing his wife he said ask forgiveness for your sin surely you are a sinful one 
and this is chapter 12 verses 25 to 29. Now bearing this incident in mind, let us look at some events which occurred in the United States in the state of Mississippi in August 1955 which have been in the news recently. These relate to the brutal killing of an innocent 14-year-old African-American boy in the UK, we say black, in the USA they say African-American, African-American boy whose name was Emmett Till. And his brutal killing has been commemorated in the past week. On 25th of July, a few days ago, President Joe Biden signed a proclamation establishing a national monument to honor the boy and his mother, Mamie, if I pronounce that correctly, his mother Mamie, M-A-M-I-E, or Mamie. Now, in brief, Emmett Till's killing took, took place as follows. He went into a grocery store, this is in August 1955, where he spoke to the owner of the store, who was a 21-year-old woman. They were alone in the store for a short while. A few days later, Emmett Till was accused of having tried to flirt with her, grab her, and talk to her obscenely. On hearing this accusation, her husband flew into a rage, and along with another relative, he tracked down the boy, Emmett Till, and they took him, abducted him, they beat him, they mutilated him, murdered him, and threw his body into a river. Later on, the husband and his relative were tried for murder, but they were found not guilty by the jury of murder. And the next year, in 1956, these two murderers sold their story to a newspaper publicly admitting that they had tortured and murdered the boy. Of course, they could no longer be put on trial again, having been acquitted once. And many years later, the woman admitted that her allegations against the boy were largely false. Let us now compare this event of 1955, <coughs> the incident of Joseph as given in the Quran which I read above. And that incident, remember, happened more than three and a half thousand years ago. Of course, when comparing these, we have to say that Emmett Till was not a slave and the woman who accused him and her husband and the relative who killed him, they were not slave owners in 1955. But their status was a continuation and a legacy of the society that existed during actual slavery in those parts of the USA, a hundred years before this. Emmett Till was a successor of slaves and those ranged against him were successors of slave owners. In the incident of Joseph as related in the Quran, when the wife alleged to her husband that Joseph has done evil to his wife and should be punished, the husband and other relatives did not, did not fly into a fit of rage against Joseph and start beating him. It was a member of the family itself 
who suggested that they should look for independent evidence instead of accepting the unconf unconfirmed allegation made by the woman. The independent evidence was provided not by a person, but by the condition of Joseph's shirt as to whether it was torn from the front or torn from the behind when he was running away from the woman. When this evidence indicated that she was in the wrong, the husband declared his wife as sinful and he told her to repent for the sin. He also asked Joseph to overlook the matter because Joseph was now cleared of this charge. So justice was administered regardless of who was the slave and who was the owner. This, is, this was in complete contrast, what happened in the case of Joseph, was in complete contrast to the Emmett Till case of 1955. In this modern day case, the woman's relatives and friends believed all the accusers, including the woman herself, without any independent evidence, and they got together to take revenge. They took revenge brutally and viciously against going against the law of their own country. And yet at their trial, the jury believed their defense and found them not guilty of murder. So justice was very much administered in favor of the party who were the successors of slave owners. Of course, there is no suggestion that the woman store owner in this case had attempted to entice the boy herself and failing in it, she then attributed the act to him. There is no suggestion that she attempted to entice him herself. So in this aspect, it differs from the incident of Joseph but she did falsely accuse him of trying to commit sexual assault and she supported those who took action on the basis of her accusation. Now regarding the incident involving Joseph, I want to point out that the brief account that I've quoted above the account which says that a member of the accuse, accuser's own family wanted to check the evidence. Then the evidence was accepted and the husband declared Joseph innocent and he declared his wife guilty. This account is found in the Holy Quran but not in the Bible. The Bible covers the whole story of Joseph his whole life in detail. It also mentions this incident. But the Bible's version is that when the wife alleged to her husband that this is, this is the way your servant treated me. According to the Bible, that's what she said to her husband. This is the way your servant has treated me. According to the Bible, the husband fell into a rage and put Joseph in prison. And this is in the book of Genesis in the Bible in chapter 39. And the husband's official position in Egypt gave him the authority to have Joseph put in prison. So that is the Bible's account. Now you can see that from the narration given in the Quran, people can learn lessons about the need for seeking evidence and doing justice on that basis and not just believing what your close relative tells you against someone else. From the Quran, people can learn lessons. Regrettably, from the narration of the same incident in the Bible, we cannot learn any such lesson. 
It has often been claimed by the Western critics of Islam that stories of the biblical prophets as given in the Quran were taken by the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam from what he had heard about the Bible, what he had heard from people about the Bible, and then he presented them as his own revelation. This is the accusation against the Holy Prophet. It is further alleged by his critics that sometimes he was confused in repeating a story from the Bible because his knowledge of the Bible was defective. This is another allegation. Now in this case, it is obvious that the Holy Prophet وسلم, could not have taken this incident from the Bible because its most significant aspects about evidence and justice are absent completely from the Bible. And also, in these significant aspects, the Quran contradicts the Bible. Therefore, the Quran's account is not some confused and garbled version taken from the Bible. In fact, the Quran's account is a clear correction of the Bible. And this shows that the Quran was revealed to the Holy Prophet ﷺ by Allah. Now the example presented in the Quran, which I've just mentioned, is from a time long before the Quran was revealed, more than 2000 years before the Holy Prophet Muhammad appeared. And this shows that according to the Quran, these are universal human values, because it's speaking of a, an incident from long ago, from long before the Quran. That this shows that according to the Quran, these are universal human values. And these values, they provide a lesson, not only for the great Western superpower that I've been mentioning, where this incident, this atrocious murder took place. But they also provide a lesson, even more so, for the societies, the Muslim societies, which claim to be following the Quran. There is another statement in the Quran that is relevant to the topic of slavery. And this is as follows. I, I will quote it in translation. This is now separate from what I've been speaking of up to now. And the Holy Quran says, Allah sets forth a parable, meaning an example or an illustration. There is a slave the property of another, controlling nothing. And, meaning on the other hand, there is one to whom we have granted from ourselves a goodly provision, so he spends from it, meaning he spends from it on good works, charitable works, he spends from it secretly and openly. Are the two alike? asks the Holy Quran. Are the two alike? Praise be to Allah, but most of, most of them do not know. This is chapter 16, verse 75 of the Holy Quran. And in the words, are the two alike? The Quran is telling us that it is better for a human being to possess things and then to use his property for the benefit of others Giving, giving from it both privately and publicly. It is better for a human being to do that. He is granted those things by God. And God also grants him power and authority over the use of his property. And the Holy Quran here says that that is a far better position than for a human being to be another human's property. 
and have no power or authority over anything because he has to obey his human master. This is a clear indication that the Holy Quran does not approve of slavery because it wants people to be owners of property and possess some power over it rather than be owned by others as the property of others with no control or empowerment for themselves. Now this was could be taken in a more general sense where the Holy Quran says the slave the slave property of another controlling nothing. That could be anyone who slavishly and blindly follows something or someone. An example may be those people whose minds, their minds become the property of religious leaders. Those people control nothing. They make no decisions by themselves. They do not think for themselves and they do as they are told by the religious leaders. So they are like a slave property of another controlling nothing himself. Again another example is those people who follow certain social customs and attitudes because they see other people following the same. Again another example this applies to certain habits where a person becomes the slave or the property of the habit. So that person is controlling nothing. He has no control. He's controlling nothing by his own decision. And rather than being the master who has it under control, he is controlling nothing. And in fact, this is so broad that this is actually the story of human life. There is a slave, the property of another, controlling nothing. That is the story of human life, unfortunately, everywhere throughout history. So may Allah enable us to achieve the freedom in every sense that Allah wishes every human being to have. Ameen. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim inna hu ta'ala jawadun karimun malikun barur rufur rahim